Hunter x Hunter episode 54. Meteor City. The Crollo? Young Crollo. I would love to get back square on Crollo, honestly. He's become like one of the characters that's most interesting to me. Yeah, it's been a very, very long day. What's his overall mission, I wonder? I bet he has one. I bet he has a big one and a, a cool one. I'm sure a bunch of the Phantom Troop members are there just for the excitement, the fun, the killing, the plunder. I mean, they have everything. They get it all. Someone like Krollo has been shown to be so intriguing because of the duality of his character. Like, he's got this gentleman, class, deep, soulful act. And then also is like murderous, killer, thief, etc. But like all my favorite villains, he's clearly a thinking man. I bet there's a big goal there somewhere. Or at the very least, like a vow to never return to something. A revenge against the world, something like that. Fortune's X aren't X right? I hope we get more of <laughs> Krollo and Neon too. I know it's... I'm running a fanfic, but... <laughs> ah yes, Shonen. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god, this is so long coming. Yes, embrace him warmly. You don't know anything, but embrace him warmly. Well, we kind of did. <laughs> They're as happy as carefree and ever, despite all the craziness and near-death experiences. But Kirupika, yeah, this, yeah, this is so great. It's so perfect. This is what I was waiting for. Normalcy, like not being a mafia don. These two became fast friends. Oh no, did, did Lirio flub this too? It's the principle, it's the love of the art. God, it's like almost bringing a tear to my eye, it's been so long since we had the four of them. Who would- I never imagined, I never imagined when we said goodbye after the Hunter exam that it would be this crazy that we have this much gap in between having the four principal characters together in one place. I think I literally said, well, it'd probably be a, a quick mo training montage. No idea. No idea. And they pulled it off so well too. Like, I don't know. Every, every, everything was great. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We don't feel it? Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Back to normal. Yeah, I wonder how long it's going to take Kurpika to like open up about everything. That's oversimplifying it and not really what they're asking. Okay, okay. Yeah, here we go. This is a real friendship right here. I think I'm lucky enough to have this with my, my friend group. This feeling of like, we all go out into the world and do different things, and then we collaborate. We come back to the center and share. And it doesn't have to be in the same sphere either. For example, Kurapika can fill in the Nen gaps, and Kulua and Gon can fill in like the emotional gaps. That being said, I'm really curious to see how they treat Kurapika in, in these episodes going forward, because obviously this was a big experience that left marks, right? Also, is this the end of the Mafia? Did he just complete the mission and leave? It wouldn't have surprised me or wouldn't surprise me if he just stayed out of, I don't know, momentum. I know it's a very serious vow, but honestly, in terms of practicality, it seems not that bad because he chooses who he uses the chains against. The only risk I can imagine is a compromising situation where it's used the chains or someone he cares about dies. All in all, I think it was a fairly tactical choice to make that vow. It's the most power you can get, probably, risking your own life, but then, well, this might be speaking too soon. Feels very manageable to not have that happen. The more I think about the Val thing and it's real life equivalent or the way I interpret it, the more I like it. If then it's something like life and your own personal power or whatever energy, I don't know. Contracts with yourself are a potential source of great power and also potential for catastrophe for yourself, damaging yourself or like whatever, your reputation with others, which is still yourself if you don't uphold them. Whatever shortcuts you take, whatever vows you break with yourself, you know, other people might not know, but you know. Being able to look in the mirror and like what you see, having the ability to stand on yourself and who you think yourself to be is probably the most powerful thing I can imagine as a source of esteem, confidence, determination. Why would you tell us or wouldn't you tell us? Oh, that's right. 
クラピカに勝ちなよ。ええ、ブルーソタクティカル。信長ってやつがいる。こいつがやばいんだ。クラピカを探してるし、俺たちを追うのも諦めていいんだ。いや、アダスニーズアーリンクス。お前らとクラピ
Whoa, <laughs> just, let's go ahead and destroy them. Wow, is this not a little bit of that like trying to prove himself thing again? This is not something you rush into. I don't think they would have worked out. Yeah, he was texting Kurapika. The leader's alive. Kurapika? I guess it could be... <laughs> All of the above. Kurapika and Hisoka. Krolo didn't see this coming. So we are going in? It's gotten more dangerous. And now Kurapika's going in. Yeah, there was a little flashback of Krolo. That's where uh, Kalua's friend was from. Yeah, so it's Jersey New. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a connection there. Some symbiosis. The most surprising thing to come out of this information is that there's law enforcement? <laughs> there's Where are they? There has been no law enforcement in Hunter x Hunter. There are no laws to enforce in the first place. And can you imagine how ineffectual they would be? If you could use Nen, you would just become a hunter. But you're inevitably like going after people who use Nen. I guess Nen people are just above the law. That's maybe why we haven't seen it. The Nen world is its own thing, hence the hunters. God knows they need people now. Okay, probably Kurapika. False fourth moon. I think that's what Ahsoka wanted. It says you're great, everyone's great, and I'm troop is great, but he can't lie. Hi, hi. Bold. Ahsoka always 10 steps ahead. Oh, he, he switched it. He flipped it. Or he did he let them read it. What does he have up his sleeve for this one? There's gum all over them right now. There's gum all over everyone. With the properties of rubber and gum. This could be where they lose a lot of people, but would Ahsoka risk an open confrontation like this? You think he has a plan here. Ahsoka's so... Freaking cool, man. He always knows what's going on. I think. I'm just basing it on his demeanor this time and like past examples. He's never caught off guard. Except for that one punch from Gon. Everyone has gum and rubber all over their bodies already. And they don't even realize it because they're they're too relaxed. He's been planting gum this whole time. It may be too late to reverse Neon's fortune because it's unclear if it's coming from Kurapika or Hisoka. And very well it could come from them both. Boxing mummy guy. I've been wondering about him. He's been quiet. So far, maybe because his mouth is bandaged. I'm trying to think if I'm Hisoka, what's the ace here? He handed that over willingly. There's a, a chance that he just smooth talks his way out of it. I don't know if the second fortune was what he received or if he like changed the word somehow, but it seems to imply that it was taken by him through force and it, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean it's one of the things that already happened. So plausible deniability about selling out Uvo, but because it's Hisoka, I, I suspect he's ready to use this to his advantage somehow and isn't just gonna backtrack.